Hello everybody, I'm Zoe Alred, I'm a ADHD trans mom game designer, and I'm going to be helping uh, Matthew Hawker here uh, put Lily Hop into Screen Top GG. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Matthew Hawker. Um, I am uh, an event host here at Break My Game, uh, and I have never used ScreenTop.gg before, so I am super excited to kind of get this started. Yes. So, um... Uh... Yeah, let's let's just go right into it. So let's start by create by selecting a game, or <clears throat> if you prefer, we could create a new one for Lily Hop. I see you've got a few here, but yeah. So these are all accidental creations. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think there shouldn't be uh, anything in any of these three. So they all should be blank canvases. I I think so. I I think we can just click one here and kind of go from there. Okay, so why don't we start? Um, do you want to make this page a little cleaner before we get into it, or, or do you uh, want to just yeah. start with the approach? How does, how does that work? How do I make this look clean? So, well, as you see that gear in the upper right corner, uh huh. You click on that, and then you could start uploading. You could set the name for it. Ooh. Um, okay. The game name I think is like a URL name, and then okay. a website is literally anything you want. You could put Play Who Games in there. Um, cool. All then, right. Okay. I'll, I'll get some images in here. Yeah. You know, it's really silly. I stared at that page and I was like, what is this for? <laughs> then you explained <laughs> it like, oh, it's for the games profile. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's on me. All right. Cool. I, I thought you were just pretending to have never seen this before. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I have explored this and I just kind of was like, hmm, I'll, I'll come back to this later. And then I would wait a little while and then I'd come back to it and I'm like, hmm, I'm ready to explore this. And then I'd start exploring it and then I would like not remember any of the things I learned. And I'm like, I'll come back to this later. And I've been trapped in the, the, I'll come back to this later loop. Uh, yeah, yeah. so, so, but we're here and I have come back to this later and it's happening. Awesome. Awesome. So um, let's go. So if you click on the edit button there, then we're okay. going to start getting into screen top and start putting things in here. Awesome. So first thing you're going to want to start with is by creating some assets. So click on that asset button there. Okay. And I'm not sure what those things are. Um, Me neither. Let's delete them. Yeah. Yeah. And All then, right. So let's just make a brand new one by clicking it. Okay. Plus. And then... Um, yeah, click on that so you can okay. start editing. And this is where you're going to upload your, your card sheets or your table or whatever. Got it. Okay. So, uh, should yeah. I, uh, would you like, can I make this for the lily pads for now? Yeah. 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 You can name this, uh, lily pads, whatever you like. And then we need to enter in the row and column information. See how many are there? Is that like a nine by five or is that a ten by Four, five? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I believe it's nine by five. Okay. So um five rows, nine columns. Yes. All right. All right. And then while we're in assets, if you have cards or anything else, it'd probably be a good idea to do that same thing. Just sure. so it's all set up for you. Okay, so for my next asset, um for my cards. I have a bunch of individual card files. So would I need to have those compiled into a sheet or could a sheet a sheet or could I upload those um as separate files into this asset? You could totally upload those as separate files. It will just mm -hmm. take a little bit longer and I think it might be less efficient like disk space wise and there is a limitation on disk space. But why don't we go it. ahead and load in at least a couple so sure. we could define those shot. like components. Okay. Now, to do that, would I just replace the asset with that card then? Um, so you would need in in this particular case, since you would be, you would probably need to create like a new asset sheet. Um, you could just okay. replace like one, but you would have to update the other ones to point to the same asset. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. will take. You will need to update some things, but I'll show you how it'll be easy to update. It'll actually, it'll actually be harder to set up stuff at, with them as individual images. Um, but, Got it. Um, okay. Actually, I think I might have thought of a way we could make it easier. Um, why don't we okay. start uploading mm -hmm. up like a couple, a few cards, like let's do three cards or something like that. 
Sure. And so for that, oh, okay, I'm actually creating another asset. So I'm going to go to asset still. I'm going to go to image. And so I'm going to put in a card. And we're just going to put in, I guess, the fly card. <clears throat> and so I have a fly in here now. Okay. So yeah, you would just keep the rows and columns as one. And this, let's call it, what, what do you call, the, what would you call this? If this was a sheet, what would you have called it? Um, I, I think I would probably just say uh, lily pad cards sheet. Okay, so let's call it lily pad um, card and then put like a space in number one. Okay. And then the next one you'll name it the same thing except number two. Okay, and got it. We'll get into why later. Okay. This is this is a oh. a trick for later. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. This is lily pad card two. That's the hypno frog. And then I'll I'll put in another one. So we'll do. Um, and so I'm already seeing why having these in a sheet will be extraordinarily useful. Um, yeah. Zoe. So while we're um, while I'm putting these in, do you have any recommendations <laughs> for? Uh, fo I know this isn't necessarily screen top .gg related, but recommendations for folks who maybe have a bunch of card files, like wh what do you think might be some great ways to get things organized into a sheet? Oh my God, I, I've been meaning to ask, um, break my game this session <laughs> because um, <laughs> what I use is I have a plugin for GIMP that I use, but mm -hmm. last time I tried to find that plugin, I think I had to like download it from some sketch site. And so, mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm trying to find something, some alternative that would be better. Got it. Okay. So, um, I, I think, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I do, I, I think I do most of mine now in using affinity, but I, I know that like, I think Nandek has a way to organize things by sheets that is pretty straightforward from what I've heard. Um, but I, I haven't used that. I think I used it once. I have no idea if the way I did it still works, but that might be a free option. I might have um, to pick your brain about that affinity thing because I was trying to figure it out later and I couldn't. <laughs> okay, I I got you. I, I figured out a good trick for this. We'll we'll talk about it later though. Okay, um, cool. Um, so yeah, I have three cards up here. Should I put in any more? Um. Well, no. Let's stop there for now. Um. Do you have any like um any tables or anything else that you want to upload at this time? I don't have a table, but I do have one other asset I should probably put in, which is, um, let me see here, the giant turn order card. So, uh, or I, I guess what I want to say is on your turn card. Okay. All right. And I think that's just one image. And um, all of my images are going to be double-sided in this game. So there's no uh, actually relevant information on the back of anything for now. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, we probably need like maybe a couple frogs too. Oh yeah, you're right. I should put some frogs in. Yeah. I don't have these in a sheet. Um, so now with these assets, these are sort of same deal. These are um, uh, individuals, right? Yeah, in, yeah, individual. But these aren't necessarily double sided in that they're not mirrored. They have a. Uh, let me see if I can. I'm trying to find my my frogs. Did I delete all of my frogs? No, no, no. They're in a folder called frog tokens. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, all right, so I a will. Place to put them. I know. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Okay, so uh, let's so see let's here. do a similar thing with these, frog. or let's give them sort of a generic name and okay, um, like Frog One or yeah, Frog Ooh. One. This is Frog One. All right, okay. Frog One. And then let me go back to assets and then I'll do. So I have like the back of frogs as well. And it's different. Should I just do frog one B like for uh, back or should I? We, yeah, we could do, yeah, we could do like a frog back one. Um, if, um, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do it that way. Okay. And so, you know, I'm continuing to see why having sheets is just like the best. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got it. Oh, and I gotta do my uh, Wallace's flying frog. All right. So let's see here. And um, yeah, I have a question cool. from David. Um, uh, so I'd recommend importing all the assets of the same type in sheets. So, um, I'd recommend importing all assets that are about the same dimensions, um, and same size as sheets, um, whether that be cards or tiles, um, including the back of cards. You could have those on the same sheet. 
and I'll explain why in a little bit. So if you have something that's the same shape and same size, I highly recommend having it in a sheet. Super, got it. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. okay. So, all right, let's start with that. And okay. just so we could have some stuff to reference when we're making components. So mm -hmm. click on that little house button in the upper left. House button in the upper yep. left. Yep. All right, I'm I'll here. Take you to home. And next, we're going to make components. So click on that components button. Ooh, and I think this is them. something I accidentally made. All right. And so click that plus. And let's see. Um, I think all of your pieces are tiles. So well, let's start with making a blank tile. Boom. Create? Yeah, let's create that. Awesome. And then click on that tile um in the in the menu on the left uh yeah all right and let's uh, do you, let's start with the lily pads okay yeah so should i name this so why don't you name this lily pad and this is what all of your lily pads are going to be based off of got and it and so flip axis that's just like whether it flips like like if it rotates along the x-axis or the y-axis when you flip it mm -hmm. and the oh actually i apologize um i think for the lily pads we might want are the um are the lily pads double-sided like um uh, so this is where it's weird there is one lily pad that is double-sided and that it has a different back all the other lily pads have the same front and back okay all right, I had an idea for this, but that one lily pad might throw a wrench in things. Um, uh -oh. Let's. Oh, though, um, though, it's worth mentioning that on my um, card sheet that I uploaded, the uh, I have I don't have uh, how to word this. I don't all of the all of the sides are on there, which means that that one lily pad that's double sided, uh, that is, uh, both sides of that are on that sheet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Um, I was thinking, um, I was thinking at one point that your lily pads could be containers, and that you could have it so you could place your frogs directly on the lily pads and it'd have them spaced around it. Um, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> excuse me, that the problem is going to be that one lily pad that's that has a double side because the containers are just one sided is the problem. So Got it. Okay. there are workarounds to that. Like you could create like um, like a like a special con like a special um container that's meant to like overlay that one to represent it flipping. But mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how you want to proceed with this because um, I think there's some <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like there's some cool tricks we could do if we make it container. Um, mm -hmm. do, so do you want to tr start with that and? I'm and a then, big believer in cool tricks. So okay. let's do cool tricks first and see what okay. happens. Then let's let's make this your frog instead then. Let's name this like uh, your frog. And okay. yeah. And then just um <clears throat> excuse me. And then rotation orientations is like which like uh how you want this piece to be allowed to be rotated. So like if you envision people sitting around like a table on four sides, then it would be four. Mm -hmm. Um so why don't we just leave it four for now? So okay. click save there. Got it. And then um are your frog your frogs are square, right? Or yes. Okay, so why don't we just leave that the way it is for now? And mm -hmm. so now we need to give the um give it some visuals. So go to the variance button on the bottom. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to find the various ways that it could appear. So um, click on that one. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to uh, click on the, you see that asset button? Yeah, click mm -hmm. on that. And you're going to select, yeah, like frog one. And then for the back asset, you're going to select like frog one B. And if you click that button on the right uh, next to the dropdown, it gives Ooh. you like a little image of them. That's yeah. handy. Okay. Yeah. And then, right. um, yes, and then click save. Okay. And then now you got yourself a frog. And a very angry frog. Yes. And then so go, so if you click on the variance button, like you see at the top of the menu sidebar, there's like the, 
it's giving you like a tree. Uh, if you click on variants. Mm -hmm. Oh, got it. Yes. Then you could, um, what you could do is you could, um, yeah, I, I think since they're all separate sheets, I think it might just, you, it doesn't matter if you clone it or not, but, um, I see. so yeah, but let's clone it just so you can see. And this would just, uh, a count of just, one. Yeah. This would just make one copy. So you could like make, if you had like all of your frogs on one sheet, I might recommend like making three clones and then there's a trick to like get all the variants to appear. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So click on that and then you'll just want to set your assets to the second frog. Got it. And super straightforward. Okay. So that's my second frog. That's for variants too. So I have variant one set. And then I have, oh, now I'm going, I'm, I'm moving around too quickly. And then I have variant two set. Yes. All right. So um, if you want, so what we're looking at is that your screen is kind of split into these three panes. And the mm -hmm. second pane is just sort of like, then you look at the component itself, but that pane on the right is like the actual table. So mm. um, nothing is actually on your table at this point. So if you click that join button in the upper, like sort of the middle top, yeah, there. And then either seat doesn't matter at this point. Um, you see that treasure chest? Yeah, you could use that. And you could like cop. You could like put your frogs into Ooh. the game. I don't know if it lets you drag and drop, but there's a button to create. And okay, like very cool. Frogs. And uh, you could make copies of those frogs if by doing Control C, Control V. So because I think you have like five frogs of each, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so you could, so this is how you would get your frogs onto the table, so to speak. Got it. Okay. Cool. Right. So next let's do the lily pads and let's do those as a container. Okay. Okay. And so, so I should go. Yeah. Why don't we, yeah. Why don't I let you try to do it this, uh, do it this time. Okay. Oh no 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 <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no. Uh, 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 so okay. So I'm back at components and uh, um, container. I, I don't know. So blank container. I think is that what we're going for here? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. I have a container. Okay. okay. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of this initial part is going to be very similar to tiles. So you're just going to name it. And, um, there is going to be one thing that's different here. Um, so after you save that, mm -hmm. um, go to the shape dropdown and your lily pads are like all circles, right? Yes. So you'll probably want this to be a circle. Okay. And then you could save that. And now, uh, the variants are going to be very different. So let's start with the variants. I like to start with that so I could see what I'm looking at. And mm -hmm. so let's define the first one, which is going to be just like your first lily pad. Uh, so. Okay. So I have yeah, the click, sheet. yeah, select the sheet and then you see that asset index, mm -hmm. um, click on that, um, button right there. Yeah. And now you can select, um, uh, one of the different tiles from your sheet. And Ooh, so which one should we do first? We should absolutely start with the first one. Okay. The the beaver. Got yeah. it. All right. And then save that. And then um let's see how many so you have nine by five, so there are forty five lily pads, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so um go back to the previous menu, the variance menu. Mm -hmm. And let's make some duplicates of this because, um, so we're not having to individually assign each of those. So go clone mm -hmm. and we're going to make 44 of those. Oop, that vanished. Uh, let me try again. Clone 44. Boom. Okay. And now we're going to use the bulk edit feature, the probably most intimidating thing about screen top. So click on that to select all of them. And then, yeah, click on that. 
And now in here, you're going to, um, this is where we're going to use like the one line of code that we use everywhere. So um, on that in between where it says return. Uh, like on the said, left? Uh, yeah, on the left panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the left panel is like where all your code is going to go. And the right panel is like giving you a preview of what it looks like. Got and it. So okay. what we want to do is um, in between that, those return brackets is where we're going to set like the values that we want. And mm -hmm. the value that we want to change is the asset index. Cause that's where it's like, that's how it's pointing out which card it is on the sheet. Mm -hmm. So you're, so right here, we're going to say, um, so type asset index. And then uh, colon, I think it, I think index needs to be capitalized. Ah, okay. And then, um, and then index. And index in this case will need to be lowercase. <clears throat> so what's happening okay. here. Who, who made that grammar book? Who made this grammar book? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie. This is um, the reason the casing is important because it's like programming stuff and the and the mm -hmm. uh, conventions that are being used here are very programmer e. <laughs> Got it. So, like the reason that the asset index is capitalized like that is because that's called camel casing. Um, and then, Got it. so if you look on the right, um, you can see like it has like all these like blocks. Um, it's like a one block and a two block and a three block. Mm -hmm. um, this is called JSON formatting, and each of those blocks is a different variant and if you look at the asset index in those, you can see that they're going one, two, three, four, five, whereas before it was just one all the way down. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is assigning this index value to asset index and index is a value that's passed in. You don't need to understand any of this, but I, sometimes it makes things less scary when it's explained. <laughs> Got it. But so okay. yeah, you could just click on that save button in the bottom right. Got it. Yes. Awesome. So, um, so now if you go to the, yeah, the chest on the right, oh. uh, click on that little back arrow in the top. Or, it says, no, maybe, I can't do it. Oh, it's the X. X? Yeah. Click on the X maybe. Wait, why is it? Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Click on that beaver. It always shows the first item. So just click on that. Oh, beaver, that's right. Oh, and boom. Now they're all there. So, um, there is one complication. There's going to be one for the front and back of that one lily pad, the caterpillar one, I think, right? Right. So maybe so, yeah, I would want to might, find the variant. We might want to delete that one. So if you scroll through here, do you see which one it is? Oh, I think I saw it. Um, up, I think it's like under that purple frog, right? Yep. So I have the caterpillar here and then the butterfly here. Okay, why don't you create, so do you want to delete the butterfly one for now, or? Sure, let's okay, delete so, it. so, well, let's, uh, so we don't have to guess which variant that is. Why don't you go ahead and create it? So go on the right and um, oh, I put see. that on the table. Okay. And now if you click on that, uh, right click on that, mm -hmm. you could um, view, go up, uh, view, and you could view variant. So now we know this is variant number 15 on the left. I see. Okay. So uh, we could go back to the previous list and we could delete variant 15. Uh, let me ask a quick question. So we wouldn't be able to maybe customize the backside of this because it's part of the whole um, container set. Is that correct? Yeah. The problem with containers is that they're only one-sided in mm. screen top. So you're only able to customize like the face of them and got it. So this has led to some complications with some of the games I've worked on and had to make a couple workarounds for those, but, um, okay. So got it. Okay. Um, to delete it, you're going to have to do it from the list over here. Got it. So, we said uh, it was 15, right? I already yeah, forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. 15. Perfect. All right. 15. There. Never liked that number anyway. See you, 15. <laughs> and All now right. the object that you had on the table that was using that variant has defaulted to the first one. A butterfly has become a beaver. I see. Yes. yes. So um, so you could, um, 
what you could do is you could delete that beaver and then create like so you could click on it and then press backspace or you could just do that too and they'll give you like a little verification and so if you wanted to create all of your lily pads all at once you could do that select all and create and awesome yes and i don't know if um i don't know what the counts of your individual lily pads are i think they might be Ooh, different right I, yes i got that all right okay. let me put these into groups here super quick just so i can kind of come back to them later yeah there are definitely some different counts um fly oh i guess oh i should i need to figure out how to um uh so uh, should, should i organize all these now or should i kind of come back to this a little bit later let's um let's I'm debating what we need to do next. Oh, let's um let's stop for now. Um, okay. And let's set up some uh, drop points for one of these lily pads. This is the cool thing that I wanted to show. Um, yeah. So um, on the on the left menu, go back mm -hmm. to the yeah, go back to the lily pads. Got it. And so down at the bot like near bottom, there's this drop zones. So mm -hmm. I click on that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, click on the drop zone. And what these are is that each drop zone def defines like um, like a uh, how certain components are oriented on top of that container. So mm -hmm. you could have a different drop zone for frogs and another one for like another thing if you had multiple things on lily pads. So for this one, mm -hmm. click on that little add button on the left. Yeah. And you're going to pick your frogs in here. Oh, it's the only okay. component. And so click save. And next we're going to define that anchor point. Uh, so click on that, yeah. And click the plus. And let's make this one a point. Okay. And uh, what's the difference between a point and a line? A point just defines like a very specific point where your pieces will go. And mm -hmm. a line is like if you want to like splay cards, for example, or if you want like pieces to be set up in a line, and as you added pieces, it might like spread to like make space for new pieces. Got it. Okay, cool. So for this one, um, so like right now, if you took one of your frogs and you put it over one of your lily pads. Um, you would see that they sort of like light up like that, and then it would just kind of snap on top of it, kind of like a kind of like a snap point. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we don't really like it being completely on top of it though, uh, because then you can't see the lily pad. So mm -hmm. let's try something fancy. Let's go to your anchor point uh, on the left. Okay. And so um, something fun you could do is you can make these anchor points go off of the container. Um, so mm. um, under the let's do under the y axis let's like do like i'm not sure minus like um minus 50 or minus yeah let's minus 50 for that mm -hmm. and then click save and so now you see that points like a little off center it's like near the top oh of the thing. yeah okay so, i see so now when you put it on, it'll hover up. So what you could do, you, you could even make it go even further off of the point. You could make it go um, like 100 off. So that's like hanging off of the container. You could even do 5,000, yeah. I, I'm going to try it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gone. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it, flew away. <laughs> That was amazing. I, I don't even, can I get it back? Oh, oh, it's oh, back. It Whoa. Okay. Oh, it returned because I adjusted the snap point. Oh, that's actually really cool. I can find it by adjusting the snap point again. It yeah. traveled so far and traveled so far back. That's amazing. It just took like a really big hop. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. So um, what I was thinking is that um, you could have... Um, anchors on your lily pads such that your frogs will like um line up around them so 
uh, why don't we try something a little bit more? You could even, yeah, so like, let's try doing like maybe minus 100 um, okay. for the Y. And okay. then, so set, so now let's, uh, yeah, let's see how that looks first. So, oh. so here's the thing. So yeah, yeah, you're going to want to drop it on the thing and then they'll automatically move it to like the nearest Got point. It. Yeah. Um, so, so now, um, another fancy. So like now, if you want to drop another frog on it, um, those mm -hmm. frogs would end up stacking because there's only the one anchor point. Um, mm -hmm. So, if you want, um, you could do another cool thing. So if you go to the on the left, there's like a thing that says capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so you could set that to. So try saying that to one. Got it. And then. Um, Let's make it and then save that. And then let's make a copy of this anchor point. Um, Just one? Um, let's no, actually let's make three uh, copies. For, uh, yeah, let's do three copies. Okay. And then so let's go to the second anchor point. And let's make this one like it's going clockwise around it. Let's set this one to like 100x and 0y. Got it. And then, yeah, save that. And so now if you try dropping our frog on it, that first one's taken, so it'll move to that spot to the right of it. Ooh, okay, I see. And, cool. um, and so the, what the capacity is doing is it, that's making sure that they don't stack on top of each other. Got it. Uh, because otherwise they'll do what they were doing before. Um, and mm -hmm. you could even make it so that the frogs rotate so it looks like they're sitting on it. So why don't we try So if on the left you see there's like auto-rotate, mm -hmm. let's try sending that to... I never know which way it rotates. Let's try 90. And if it's not 90, it might be 270. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Yep. I wonder why that first one is stacking sometimes still. Oh, maybe we didn't save the capacity change on it. Ah, um, let me uh, let me go back and double check. Yeah. Oh no, the capacity is there. That's weird. Well, clearly it's it's an optional capacity. The game yeah, like, clearly. <laughs> yeah, the game is like ah, it's optional. Oh, um, sometimes I've noticed that if you change an anchor point while something's anchored on it, it doesn't always update right away. Uh, so ah. you might try moving it back on. Okay, so let's try that again. So, oh, okay, cool. Oh yeah, so we need to set the rotation for that first anchor point to zero, so it rotates it upright. Ah, okay. Boom. Yeah, so you could have like some fancy math that sets like, like eight anchor points around it, so your frogs will just sort of show up as a circle on it. And now, if you grab that monster, um, it'll drag all the frogs with it. Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, why I was excited to make them containers and like completely forgot that you had the one that's double sided. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, cool. But yeah, so something to play with. Um next, um you're going to need um you're going to need like a draw bag or something, right? Because mm -hmm. um you're going to be drawing these lily pads from like a bag. Um, mm -hmm. So why don't we create, so go back to your components and we're going to create like a, uh, like a circle. We're going to create like a container that will like hold your lily pads. Okay. So I am creating a blank container. Okay. I want to click it too, because I'm wild. Yeah. What should I call this container? It's just a container. Yeah, maybe like a draw bag box. Draw. Uh, I'll, I guess a uh, lily bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lily bag. And then um, you could have the. I think let's uh, do a hidden style none on this, and um, then save that. I often forget to save that, and if you don't, then it will go back to being, like, component number one. <laughs> mm, got it. So then for this one, it doesn't matter whatever you want to look like. You could We could change the color under variance. Um, 
yeah if you uh if you go to path you could even so yeah you here you can make it like uh um you can make it like a hexagon or something and then if you go to path they'll even have like some shapes like hearts and stuff five thousand sides i haven't seen this can we can we can we try this let's try it it might complain oh uh, what, what is what's 20 oh what's 20 look like okay that's just a circle <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's pretty much just a circle all right i'll i'll do a seven-sided there we go yeah okay we got our seven-sided bag here um and then for this one so this is going to be a container for holding uh lily pads if you want to change the color of it you could go to variance and you could change the color of it there oh okay um let's Let's do a, a light blue bag. Oh, oh that's the stroke that... color. So that's the ah. outline of it. Okay. Oops. Well, now I have two different blues. Sorry, everyone that does visual <laughs> things. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right. That's okay. That's that's good. I, I yeah. like it. Yeah. And so now you can go back to the lily bag, unless you want to have multiple varieties of bags. No, no, just one. Too many bags. I I just get lost in those. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, I realize we're probably going to need to make this a little bit bigger than the uh, lily pad. So let's change the radius to, I don't know, like... 5,000? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I think, yeah, it's going to complain. <laughs> 2,048. Oh, oh. All right. Yeah, that's... Okay, that's, that's fair. So let's... Like... I guess I'll try... Uh... Like a uh, hundred or, um, it doesn't need to be that much bigger. Um, okay, got it. And then, um, and then if you go to the drop zones, mm -hmm. or actually, I should let you do this part because, uh, you should know how to do this now. Okay, drop zones, add child component lily pads. Yeah. Save. Okay. And I guess and, I can name this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is the... This what, is what, like well, a, what, well, this is a oh, drop sorry? zone. I don't always name all the drop zones and variants, especially when there's only one, but... <laughs> okay. This doesn't have a name. Got it. And... Um, um, and let's... Um, let's... I, you don't actually need an anchor point. You could still put stuff on top of it. Uh, let's let's leave it at that for now, and uh, let's go to the right and put it on your table. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go to my chest, and I have the bag. And I hit create, and there it is. All right. So now um, you could put lily pads on it, but. They're not going to be very hidden. Um, so, Whoa. and it doesn't have a um, anchor point, so they just sort of sit on top of it without snapping to anywhere. Um, Got it. And we let's leave that off for now. Um, I want to show something mm -hmm. cool. So, um, so they're not hiding, and this is a property that's set on containers after they've been put on the table. So mm -hmm. if you go to the blue, uh, to your lily bag on the table and right click it, mm -hmm. you could set a view policy on it. And you could set that view policy to deny all, or um, if you wanted to make it so that you had like a seat that like, that you could sit in as a, um, like a play test observer, you could like mm. make it so that only allows that one seat. And then, um, whenever anybody sits there, um, let's see, I think, why is it still showing? Oh, oh, um, I think I know what's going on. Uh, I think I saw you set this earlier. So if you go back to your components mm -hmm. and go back to your lily pads, mm -hmm. yes. So, ah, uh, yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> Got it. That's what that's for. I yeah, see. Yeah. See, I I went off the instructed path, and I <laughs> I goof. That's on me. I was playing around, being a goofball, and I paid the price. Um. So, 
these would be opaque and luckily yeah. that changes for everything it looks like yeah yeah so now all of them will hide when you stick them there got it okay so, um you might think that that's not um particularly helpful if you can't shuffle things in there but um let me show you a trick why don't you grab like a few lily pads that you don't mind jumbling up sure and stick them in there and okay. so um Oh, they all stack. Uh, for the sake of fun, let's make your um, lily bag a little bit bigger. Sure. Okay, let's go back to the lily bag. Uh, let's make this 250. Yeah, yeah. And then um, spread the... You could actually still grab those lily pads, even though... Yeah, you could just spread them around like that. Okay, so okay. Um, if you press uh, Control-A when you're on a object... Uh, well, well, you're yeah. If you if you click one of those lily pads inside that container and you press Control A, um, it will select all of the lily pads that are in there. Mm. And now, if you press Z, it's gonna shuffle them all. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, this is really addicting. Yeah. So you could go the like sort of like logical way and just make one snap point and have all the lily pads like sort of like create like a deck and shuffle them like a deck but i think considering that like it's tiles in a bag it might be more fun to have it like that than when people shuffle it they could see them all like jumble around <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh the question if this wasn't a stack could i shuffle it oh yeah yeah you could do the same thing you could um either double click it to select the whole stack or you could control a and then you could shuffle it just like a deck of cards Got it. very cool yeah no yeah. this is much more fun though the jumble yeah yeah for sure okay cool you just have to be careful because if you select the lily pad outside of it and you press control a it's going to select every lily pad on your table and then if you try to click and move it it'll group them all into one big deck so got just it the little caution on that <laughs> got it okay cool excuse me um let's see what other things do we need to get in here so correct me if i'm wrong but i think this is like most of the stuff that you would need to like like you still need to like make copies of make the right copy number of copies of stuff and get your other frogs mm -hmm. and oh yeah we also need to get your cards in but mm -hmm. like this is like this is like the basics of what you would need to play the game right yeah so i would need i think all i really need are the uh the, like what you do in a turn and then um the cards that explain what the lily pads are and i probably would want to resize the lily pads which i believe i can do pretty easily similar to how we resize the bag Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be easy to do. Yeah, you just change it in the component. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, excuse okay. me. So let's, let me do that real quick. I guess I'll make these a little bit bigger just to, uh, let's see. This might be too big, but let's give it a shot. Uh, this is fine for now. Yeah, yeah. Though now I need a bigger bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's make this 500. Okay, this is a little too big, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right, got it. So let's, um, so in the sake of um, trying to keep this under an hour, let's uh, move on to like, uh, I want to do the guides because I think at this point you probably know how to create your cards um, mm -hmm. and put those in. Oh, that's right. I did want to show this other thing. Um, so um, go back to, oh, there's two things I want to cover before we finish this. Uh, go back to mm -hmm. the home. Okay. And um, this one will be quick and easy. Go to guides. And mm -hmm. then you could create plus guide here. And this is where you could like set up some rules for your game. Um, and if you type something, you could type literally anything in there. But right now it's just got like instructions on how to use markdown, which is like mm -hmm. how it uses, how it formats text. And so I'll, um, I'll erase all this. Yeah, you just put like yes. <laughs> that's the that's the guy. And now Please if, you go, <laughs> if you go to the <laughs> if you go to the right in your play area above the treasure chest, there's like that question mark. 
And now you got a little guide in there. It says, please hop. So okay, cool. I use that area to like make, put like my rules of the game. And I also like put links to like feedback forms and um, for my games that have like more involved guides, I put like the a link to the PDF or something. So something got to keep it. in mind. And it always has that default one of like screen top controls and shortcuts. Ooh, handy. Okay, very cool. And cool. so last thing that I want to show you, which I think is going to be really relevant for um, Lily Hop. Uh, so go back to the home button mm -hmm. and go down to where it says surfaces. Mm -hmm. And let's add a new surface. So oh, a is, new surface. Yeah. So what surfaces are, are kind of like, um, if you would imagine having like multiple tables, um, so you might like have like all of your pieces set out on a table and then be like, okay, we're going to play with these and move them to your actual play table. So mm -hmm. what I was thinking you could do is you could set up one of these tables to have all of your pieces laid out. And mm -hmm. as you select which lily pads you're going to take, you could carry them over to the second table where you're actually going to play the game. Got it. So, um, right now, uh, see on the bottom where it says, uh, surface one. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you click on that. Oh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. sorry. And plus that, then you're going to see that you're brought to like a brand new table. Oh. Yeah. I and then see. you go back to surf. So you can also press one and two on your keyboard to like alternate between the two. And so what you could do is you could take your right click on your lily bag. Mm -hmm. And you could say, you see, there's like a move to. Yes. Yeah. You can move that to surface two and the whole thing will just shift over there. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. So you could, I, was envisioning that when you're setting up your game, you could totally select all the relevant lily pads, throw them in the bag, and then just take everything over to the table. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And then if players want to look at what else is available, they can do that and it doesn't just disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They could go back to table one and they could see, like, oh, okay, these were the other things we could have played with. Got it. Okay. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Um, My bag. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. another thing you could do is you could just pick it up with the mouse and then press one and it'll just take it with you. Oh, I like that. It takes everything in the container too. It doesn't just like take the bag and then it's like, sorry, <laughs> you got to take all your tokens separately. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, let's see. I got a question from David. Uh, what's the major difference between the tile and the container? Uh, is that tiles can't have any points. Yes, there's two major differences between containers and tiles. One is that um, tiles are two-sided, so you could have like the front and the back of them. So, and containers, they cannot be flipped. They only have the one face. Um, and then the containers um, have anchor points and things could be put on top of them. So like right now, if, well, Matt only has the one tile, but if Matt had like multiple tiles and uh, he tried to like, put one on top of the other and then move the bottom one around, it wouldn't move with it. So that's what the containers are good for. All right. Got cool. it. Um, so with that in mind, I was actually thinking that um, just like a, a nerd cool thing, why don't we load up one of your cards? Um, so to sort of demonstrate what I had in mind. Uh, so let's make a new component. Mm -hmm. And um, Let's make it as a, your, your cards are only one sided too, right? Yes. So let's make a container for your cards and I'll show okay. you why. Okay. Boom. I'll name this card. <laughs> Can you put images in the guides? There are markdown, um, there are ways to put images in your guide with markdown. I haven't completely explored that, but I believe it is possible. I just haven't done it myself yet. Got Sorry, it. I was answering a question, Chad. Oh, you're perfect. Um, so I have a card here that is a container, and then I'm keeping it opaque, I imagine. Uh, yeah, the hidden style is just like if what it's going to look like when it hides. And mm -hmm. so 
for the most part, I just, I don't really mess with it unless I anticipate it going into like hands or areas where it might get hidden. Got Um, it. so you could just leave that as opaque or none, or I don't think this, these cards are ever hidden from the player. So, right. So I guess I should make it none just in case it accidentally goes in the bag somehow. Yeah. Although that won't be possible because you would need to define it as a, ah, and what the ink drop, uh, drop points. Yep. You're right. Okay. I'm with it. All right. So I'll hit save. Mm-hmm. And now, so uh, what next? Let's, so let's, um, I'm going to let's give you some space and see if you remember. Okay. So I'm going to go to variants. And I think we have three cards right now. So uh, before, before I do, okay, hold on. I'm going to click. Let's be wild. All right. Uh oh. Oops. I'm going to clone. Oh, no. I keep uh, doing the thing where I, I just need a backspace. Okay. I want to go ahead and be really wild and highlight all, edit. Oh, wait, no, I see. I see now. Excuse me. I want to delete these clones. I did this in the reverse order, thinking I could tr- be tricky, and I cannot be <laughs> tricky. Okay, so let me go here. I want to go to Asset, uh, lily pad card, and um, okay, this is Asset Index. That's one, so that looks correct. That's great. So I want to click Save. Now, I th- oh I don't think I can do that still because it's a sh- it's not a sheet. So I think well, I just need to actually let's copy. do it. Um, okay, let's make do it. make some clones of it, and I'll show you the reason why I had you named them the way that you did. Okay, clones. All right, so now um, I think we only have three of your cards in there. Um, okay, so, so let's I'll... yeah yeah let's yeah so select all of those and let's do a bulk edit. Okay. And now, so, um, so now <gasps> you're right. They're only in one sheet, but I want, I want to take a guess. Is this correct? Is this yes. what I'm doing? Um, yes. although I don't know, I've never tried this one. Well, let's try it because I have no idea if this will work. So let's click save. Um, let's look at variant two. Did that work? It did work. Oh, you could just directly edit the JSON. Oh, I learned something new today. That's really cool. <laughs> I was going to but, have you write some kind of extra scary code to like do that automatically. Um, maybe we should do that just to sh- demonstrate how that would yes. be done. Uh, so Let's do it. I'm like, sorry. I, I apologize. I was thinking about how I would like uh, like take a, a hammer and wrench to like a website without understanding code. And I would do really simple things like this until they worked. And I saw this and I was like, I, I know this. I, I used to break websites without knowing what I was doing. This is, this is perfect. Okay, so, I'm ready. Um, here's what I was thinking. So in between those return brackets on the left, mm-hmm. go to the, um, go in between them and start with just asset and then colon. And now um, we're going to use this weird tilde. Do you know what the tilde character is? It's sort of like a single quote mark, but it's a little funny looking. It's usually in the upper left corner of the keyboard next to the one. Yeah, one of those. Oh, so if it's not this one, it might be the other one. And I don't have that on my keyboard because I have a tiny keyboard. Oh, okay. But let's see if this this works. Otherwise, I'll look it up and copy paste it. (laughs) I'm not super clear on my uh, JSON, but um, so now do lily pad card like it's in the assets on the right. So like the capital, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I was thinking the wrong character. That's the tilde. I'm sorry. I was looking at China. So now put a dollar sign left bracket. (laughs) And then... um, I th- actually, I'm sorry, curly bracket. Oh, okay, got it. Like this, then, or do you? Yeah, okay. yeah, like that. And then index, lowercase. And then uh, back curly bracket. Got it. And then the quotation character again. Let's see. Okay, I don't think it worked. Um, I wonder if you could just... I'm going to put this character in chat and see if you could copy that and... Yep. Put that instead around your text there. Yeah. I, I used to know the shortcut for this, and I keep forgetting it because I'm silly. All right, there we go. Let's see All if right. this fixed it. And that does the same thing. Oh, so if you look on cool. the right, you can see that it's uh, it's what it's done is it's taken that 
index variable and injected it into that string. Oh, sorry, I'm using programmer words. But yeah, it basically did like a substitution to stick that into the um, the name. And so if you had a whole bunch of these, um, it, this would be easier than going through like a list of 50 and changing them. Nice. So I, I like this because like if I am feeling super lazy when it comes to making a card sheet, like, you know, like you know, I feel like there's games where I like, you know, have five cards and I'm too lazy to make a sheet out of it. This would be my alternative, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though this would take longer than probably making a sheet, this would be my lazy solution for, for that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, let's save that. And then um, this was a, I got sidetracked. Oh, um, so do you know what the dimensions of your card is? Because I think I'm noticing that they might be getting like cropped a little bit. Um, this is prob. Uh, I don't know them off the top of my head, but to be honest, it's probably the case because I'm not using um perfect uh graphic design here. Let me yeah, let yeah. me let me take a look at them. I think yeah, these are right. This one just needs to be uh fixed. This is just me being bad, or or it's possible that it is a little cut, but I'm I'm okay with that. I can I can spruce that up later. Yeah, 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 no problem. And then um, when you, if you were to come back to this with a sheet instead, um, you mm -hmm. could use the whole same bulk edit thing to change the asset to point to the new asset sheet, mm -hmm. and then use and then asset index to set the index. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, but for now, let's put one of these cards down, and so I could show you this other idea that I thought would be great for Lily Hop in particular. Sure. Um, Whoa. Tiny. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so actually let's use one of the other cards with one of the like lily pad because fly is like a standard um mm -hmm. uh yeah, let's do well that. actually wait. Um no actually the no, this is fine. Um and then um so I was thinking that um you could have all these cards like sort of um listed out on like your first surface and mm -hmm. people could like just grab the cards and drag them to the second surface um and so you could have like your cards be containers that can that contain all the components associated with that card so ah, um, so I, I was so i was thinking that your card could have like could be a container for lily pads and then you could stick all of your fly lily pads in there that's smart. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think I think you might have all the tools you need to put Lily Hop in. I think only like other component besides finishing getting the assets in there is the the turn card that you made. But uh, mm -hmm. let's do that one because um uh I th think this is going to show like a. Uh, the issue that I thought we were seeing with your cards. Okay, so, let's see. Should I make this a container as well? Um, this one, I feel like it could be a tile unless you wanted to use it to hold all the starting, like, the lay pads or something. Got it. Let's let's go with tile. I like it. And then let's do... Uh, I already forgot what I called it. Uh, let's go with turn guide. And... Okay, I want to make this bigger than it is. Oh, I don't know what size it is. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, where the complication I was seeing is. So like, let's leave it at 128 for now, and let's load in okay. your asset. Okay. Uh, oh, not this. No, no, that's right. Oh, that's right? Oh, okay, got it. And then asset on your turn card. And we'll just give it a back asset on your turn card. And this is... Turn card. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Got like, it. it doesn't like stretch it; it crops it, so it's centered. So um, that's why it's going to be important to know the kind of dimensions of your like cards, so you could make sure that they fit properly in there. Hmm. Okay. I think I think this is four thousand by twenty three eighty three. Is this pixels? Uh. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And it will scale it. So, like, if you cut those in roughly half, then it will still look about right. Um, Got it. Okay. Oh, how do I half the three? Can I do decimals? 
Um, I don't think. Oh, actually, I don't know. We could try. Eleven ninety one point five. It's happening. Yeah, let's try it. We have decimals. Oh, we have yeah. points. Oh <laughs> snap! All right, <laughs> we, we are getting into the nitty gritty. We are going places most numbers cannot go. <laughs> Wild. All right, oh, I'm with and, it. And one last thing, I realized I never explained. Uh, you see that corner number? Uh huh. That just that's just how rounded you want the corners to be. So if you set that to like 5,000, four ninety eight is probably, oh, it's 20. <laughs> <laughs> that probably just make it certain. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. So maybe let's try. Yeah. That, yeah. That works. That's good for me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Wish I wish 5,000 worked though, but this is fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this. Okay, but, awesome. And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump it in there. Yeah. Boom. Oh, it's over everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we could show how tiles can't hold anything. So, like, why don't you try putting like one of the lily pads or something on top of your rules card, and you can see what happens if you try to like move it around with it. Things mm. kind of just phase through it. Got it. Huh, so if you okay. want stuff to move with it, you need to make it a container. And you need to also make a drop point for it. So like mm -hmm. if you take your card and you try to put it in the um, lily bag, um, mm -hmm. it'll similarly fall through it. Got it. I and see. And then if you grab the bag, then you'll see that the card falls through it. Yeah. Huh. So, cool. So that's why it's important to set the drop zones and what could be inside container i'm really excited because i was like how do i make this game in here and now i i i, I kind of get it that's cool yeah um like we're at an hour but um if you want i we could spend a little time to sh show you what i have what i have in mind for like the caterpillar lily pad yeah let's talk about that because i'm sure other people have like double-sided tiles out there that move around so that might be handy to know yeah, in your case, this is an exception, so um, a little bit more okay with this. But um, like I have, like in persuasion, I have like this problem where I have like double-sided things where I want things attached to it. Um, so let's. Um, but for in your case, it's like one exception. So let's create mm -hmm. like a tile for like the face of your butterfly. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. This. Yeah this and butterfly <clears throat> all right and then let's make it the same like size as your lily pads i forget what it is like 100 circle radius i think uh oh um let me see go back to components lily pads yeah 100 yeah all and right then, um and then let's go to actually oh shoot well i'll, I'll this will, this will be a good exercise to show why this is going to be a problem. Um, so let's okay. give this the variant of the butterfly. So I'm going to give you some space to see. I see. Yeah. Because I don't, or I don't have the, oh, uh, well, let me, this is the asset, asset index, butterfly, 15. Uh, back asset would be, oh, I see this again. And then back asset index, caterpillar. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, and let's, um, now let's put that onto your table and all right. And where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. And let's go back to your um, lily pad container. Okay. Lily pad container. The, 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 the bag, right? The lily bag? Oh, I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. The lily pad. I'm sorry. I'm thinking <laughs> oh, okay. in terms of so, objects. Got it. Okay. Okay. So let's go down to drop zones. Got it. And we're going to create a new drop zone 
for your brand new butterfly thing. Okay. I want to call it the butter zone. <laughs> I'm into it. All and right. You'll want to add your uh, butterfly component to that. Got it. Okay. And let's put the let's put anchor on this one, and let's put it like dead center. So that's going to be like the default one. Um, so now, um, like if, if this was not an exception, I might do this differently because right now, if you take that butterfly card, you could, you can put it on any lily pad. Um, I see. So if you, if you wanted to, um, you could create like a unique container just for um just for the butterfly that is almost like a copy of the lily pads except like um except just like um except it has like space for this card in mill so like what i was thinking is like you have like a but you have like a caterpillar lily pad somewhere i think right yes yeah so um i don't oh why don't you just make a new one go to your chest instead of like fishing for it and i think it's going to be the beaver actually oh got it because that's the um i see got yeah, it yeah. Create. And then, yeah so now you what you could do is you could um when when that would be flipped you would put your butterfly on top of it mm. and then okay. um and then it could still hold frogs but the problem is that while that tiles on top of it you can't move it around so Got it. this is why sometimes what I do is I have like it like a little bit bigger or give it like a border um, so that way you could grab the border and move it around that way without moving mm -hmm. the face covering. But that's like the that's the workaround I've gone for this like double sided like container thing, like having a card that acts as the face of it. I guess since also this is a, an exception to the rule for at least this game, I could always just have a caterpillar container and a butterfly container and swap them out really quickly. That too, that too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. I I, I think I, I have the, the, the bones of what I need to kind of put this together and make it work. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I hope I gave you enough space to learn and didn't take the steering wheel too hard. <laughs> No, you did a you did a perfect job and you did amazing. And so, like I uh, I can say confidently that now when I come back to this, I will know what I'm doing and not just go. I'll deal with that later. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> awesome. Now I now I I have the the building blocks to do this. So thank you. This is awesome. Excellent. Well, I'm really glad this helped. Um, and awesome. So yeah, um, that's that's pretty much it for the stream. Um. If um, so, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the invisible audience now, Matt. I hope you don't mind. It feels very weird. Yeah, please, please, <laughs> please go ahead. Um, so um, thank you for watching. Um, and um, like uh, if I would highly recommend ScreenTop. It's an excellent platform for um, for just prototyping your uh, projects, and it's free and accessible to people. And all you have to do is provide them a link and. Um, I'm a very active member of the Break My Game community, so I highly recommend coming there to ask for help. There's also a screen top uh, GG Discord where the developer, the developer single case, is very active and responsive to like requests and things like that. And also, if you were interested in having me help you put your prototype into screen top, I'm offering similar guided prototyping sessions. Um, I'm going to put a link into uh, chat and if you're viewing this on YouTube um, there's going to be a link there for a sign up form if you're interested and um, yes uh, thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much Matt for being my first uh, victim volunteer thank you Zoe I really appreciate the time you spent today and I appreciate learning some new skills awesome uh, super uh, thank you